I bought the new Samsung Galaxy Fit 5 and Fold 5 and compared them to the best Samsung smartphone to show you which one you should buy. The S23 Ultra has by far the biggest battery and should destroy them, but the winner will shock you. Let's jump right into the battery test. Here we've got the newest foldables, the Flip 5 and Fold 5, and have also thrown in the predecessors, the Flip 4 and Fold 4, and of course, S23 Ultra. On paper, they are very minor upgrades. I mean, they even have the exact same battery capacity, 3,700 milliamp hours on the flips, 4,400 on the folds, and the S23 Ultra has a bigger battery at 5,000 milliamp hours. But has the battery life improved? As always, all phones are on the exact same Wi-Fi network with Bluetooth and location enabled. There's no SIM card in either of them, and I've matched the brightness to keep it all fair. Battery tests with foldables are unique because they have two screens. That's kind of the whole point of a foldable. So throughout the test, I'll alternate between the inside and the outside screen of the folds. So for example, the first half an hour of watching TikToks on the inside screen, and then continuing for half an hour with the fold closed using the outside screen. That way we can compare the battery gain between both screens. And I think it's more representative of how you'd actually use a fold, right? Because if I were just to test one of the screens, then why even buy a foldable in the first place? There's going to be times where you unfold it and times where you're just going to be using the outside screen. Now, in theory, the inside screen should definitely use more battery than the much smaller outside one. But the question is, how much? So far, in terms of battery life, we actually have the Fold 5 in first place, closely followed by the S23 Ultra, which is surprising. The Fold 4 and Flip 5 aren't too far behind either, but the Flip 4 is already in last place by a couple of percent. For the folds with TikTok and Instagram, there seems to be no difference between the outside and the inside screen. And the reason for that, I think, is the aspect ratio. These apps aren't optimized for the rectangular aspect ratio, so there's a very big black border, which means part of the screen that's used isn't much bigger than the outside screen. That's different for the apps that are up next. In Temple Run, it uses the whole screen, and that drains the battery quite a bit more than the outside screen, 3% more in half an hour. That's a lot. Three hours in, the Fold 5 and the S23 Ultra are in a close battle, but the Fold is surprisingly still leading the bunch, the Fold 4 is a couple of percent ahead of the Flip 5, and its predecessor is in last place with a 6% gap. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to smash the like button to show your support. The flips work kind of differently than the folds, right? Because they only have one screen, but that changed with the Flip 5. The biggest upgrade of the Flip 5 is the new cover screen, which is much bigger now at 3.4 inches, up from 1.9 on the Flip 4. That means it basically covers half of the phone, and that completely changes the way you use it. You see before on the Flip 4, you always had to flip open your phone to do anything more than just check some notifications. But with the Flip 5, you can actually use your apps on the cover screen. Now it only really makes sense with some apps, but it is possible. For example, here on YouTube, you can just watch a whole video without ever opening your phone. And that saves a lot of battery. Only 2% lost in half an hour of YouTube on the cover screen compared to 5% using the main display. Now it doesn't make sense to do this with every app because some you just won't use without flipping your phone open. And the Flip 4 obviously can't do this. So in order to keep it fair and to compare the better, I did do this only once or twice to demonstrate it. But if you think you're gonna use a bunch of apps on the cover screen, you can expect even better battery. Now we've been talking about the screen so much, let's actually look at the numbers because the screen is the biggest battery draining component on a smartphone. All of them are dynamic AMOLED 120 Hertz screens that can go from one up to 120 hertz, which is very nice. The folds both have the exact same screens, no upgrades whatsoever. 6.7 inches, 1812 by 2176 pixels with a very weird, nearly square aspect ratio. Oh, and they also still have the same sick under display camera. Very cool. The outside screen is also the same, 6.2 inches sub 1080p with a much slimmer aspect ratio. The flips also have the exact same screen, 6.7 inches, 1080p, but the newer one does get a little brighter and has slightly smaller bezels. The S23 Ultra has a 6.8 inch 1440p display. You can reduce the resolution to get more battery life, but if you're paying for such a nice screen, I think you should use it to its full potential. Let me quickly tell you about this video sponsor, Mobile Trans by Wondershare. If you've ever tried to switch between Android and iOS, you know what a pain that can be. Mobile Trans makes this process seamless. It lets you transfer all your data between phones with just one click. And the best part is you don't even need a computer to do this. You can just use your phones. That way you get to keep all of your contacts, your photos and videos, documents, apps, and more. Now that might not impress you as there's plenty of other options to do this. One thing you always lose when switching platforms is your WhatsApp chats. Mobile Trans solves this issue. With Mobile Trans, you can back up and transfer all of your WhatsApp chats and media from one phone to another. 
That way, all of your data will be saved and you won't lose anything in the process of switching devices. So if you're looking to switch between iOS and Android, try Mobile Transfer free using the link below. And thanks again to Wondershare for sponsoring this part of the video. Now let's continue with the battery test. Five hours in, the S23 Ultra is head to head with the Fold 5. The Fold 4 is a percent ahead of the Flip 5 and the Flip 4 is quite a bit behind. Now in terms of performance, they have a new chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 4 Galaxy. This is the newest, most high-end chip made by Snapdragon, and it's also the one the S23 uses. The Flip 5 performs a little worse, even though it has the exact same specs, and that's probably due to the smaller body, which means less cooling and therefore reduced performance. The Fold and Flip 4 both use the previous chip, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Both are 4 nanometers chips, so there's no huge efficiency gains, but performance is surprisingly quite a bit better. This round of benchmarks was super draining. They all lost 12% in just 40 minutes. See, no real efficiency gains. The S23 lost 11%, I guess because of its larger battery. At six and a half hours, we got our first low battery warning. Recording 4K video always drains the battery a ton. By the way, the cameras are the same and unchanged from the predecessors. During this round, the S23 Ultra finally took over the lead, while the Flip 4 is the first to reach single digits. At seven hours, we're now going to do a standby test because we don't use our phones nonstop throughout the day. After about eight hours of standby, the results are very consistent though. They all lost 3% overnight, except for the Ultra, which lost 4%. These are decent results, but nothing too impressive. Now let's continue with some Netflix. Here we once again see the difference between the inside and the outside screen. On the Flip 5, surprisingly, it only loses a percent less than when using the full screen, which is weird. And on the Folds, it doesn't make a difference at all. Not what I expected at all. It's still a tight race between the Fold 5 and the S23 Ultra, which is quite impressive. I thought the S23 would definitely win this. It has a smaller screen and a much bigger battery, but the battle continues. Just before the eight hour mark, the Flip 4 was the first to go. The Flip 5 and the Fold 4 are tied and the Fold 5 and the S23 Ultra are still battling things out. The S23 Ultra is slightly ahead, but maybe the Fold can still make a comeback. But now all of them are on single digits, so let's fast forward things and finally get to the results. In fifth and last place, we have the Flip 4 at seven hours and 55 minutes. It's an okay result. With foldables, you always have to make the concession of getting less battery life than if it weren't a foldable. I guess it's somewhat usable, but if you use your phone a lot, you probably want to avoid this phone. Plus, I did also run a charging test, which I didn't include in this video because the results aren't too interesting, and it unfortunately charges pretty slow as well. In fourth place, we have the Flip 5, lasting 8 hours and 29 minutes. It is a pretty decent upgrade over its predecessor, especially considering that it doesn't have any bigger battery than the Flip 4. It's getting to the point where it can't last you through a whole day, unless you're a super heavy user. And if I'm being honest, for such a big phone, it should probably last a little longer. The folding mechanism will definitely cost you some battery life. So if you don't really need a folding phone, just get the S23 Plus instead, which is basically the exact same phone, but it will last you much longer. Now granted, if you're going to be using the cover screen a lot, it will probably result in pretty good battery life. In third place, lasting just a minute longer at eight hours and 30 minutes, we have the Fold 4. Battery life is okay, but given the huge footprint of this phone, I mean, it's basically two phones stacked together, you should probably expect some better battery life. Charging speed, on the other hand, is quite a bit faster than on the flips. The question is, who won it? The S23 Ultra or the Fold 5? In the end, the S23 Ultra was ahead and it looked like it was gonna win. But surprisingly, the S23 Ultra only came in second. At nine hours and 17 minutes, it's a very good result and it should definitely last you through the whole day. It is, however, Samsung's non-foldable flagship and should probably have the best battery life Samsung has to offer, which unfortunately isn't the case. Now granted, it is running at 1440p and you can reduce it to 1080p or even 720p to get even better battery life and charging speed is also all right. In first place, and this came as a shocker, we have the Samsung Galaxy Fold 5. Granted, it only lasted a minute longer at nine hours and 18 minutes, but it is a very impressive result for a foldable. It is also nice to see that it is quite a significant upgrade over its predecessor, even though on paper pretty much nothing changed except for the chip, but I guess that is enough. Charging speed is also fast enough, I guess, and this phone will definitely last you through a whole day. So if you're a power user, this is a great phone for you. You can make use of that huge, gorgeous display while not having to worry about battery life. What do you guys think of these results? Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss any of my upcoming videos. Watch this video next, and I'll see you guys in the next one.